Hey, good morning CityGate Church and to any of our online guests, maybe this is your first time joining us, welcome. We are CityGate Church, we are based in Beckenham in London and uh, we are so happy to, to be able to spend the day with you here today. Uh, we're going to see and watch from Dr. Richard Perrinchief today, our guest speaker. And uh, he's actually, he was here with us in the last um, week yeah. because he was one of our guest speakers for our anniversary. We had the 25th anniversary. Uh, Lamida, yeah. tell us a little bit of what happened. Yeah, because we've been having like, you know, a fun, packed, crazy, you know, kind of month at City Gate yeah. Church, haven't we? So 25th anniversary was last week. The week before was mm. um, First Fruits yeah. Celebration. And this is um, a time of faith in the church. It's mm. amazing. And it's where we come together as a church. We pray, yeah. we commit the year to the Lord. And, um, you know, we sow financially as well, believing for breakthrough through in every area mm. and isn't it amazing how we've already started hearing absolutely. the absolutely. testimonies? We've, we've been hearing testimonies already, prayers answered. Hey, if you're sitting here, you're like, I had my prayer answered, you know, I've been, I've been believing for this thing and uh, it has come through, then we want, we want to celebrate with you. Yeah. So um, why don't you send us an email and a link here and uh, we would love to just, just connect with you mm. and um, celebrate with you. We'll pass that on to our prayer team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so you know, apart from that, we had the 25th anniversary, mm. like Tim mentioned, and yeah. you know, it was a whole weekend of teaching, yeah. of praise party galore. Oh, I love a praise and worship party, yeah. <laughs> and even the children, you know, it was probably very memorable for them as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we're celebrating 25 years you know, by the grace of God mm. as a church. That's so. it, 25 years of God's faithfulness. Yeah. And but right now we're going to go into Dr. Richard Perrinchief. So press in, get your notebooks out and um, let's hear the word of God today. Well, anything happened since I was here last? Just the whole world changed the last two years, huh? I haven't been here in about four years. I want to talk today about daring to dream again in a message I call Leaving Smallville. Leaving Smallville. Before I do that, I want to um, just uh, tell you the joy of my life and show you my five little joys, my five-fold ministry, my five grandkids. Uh, if you guys have that slide, we, we had it right there. So that's my five right there in order. And we're just so blessed. Uh, this is my daughter's kids, my daughter and her husband, and this is my son's daughters. And we're just so blessed to have a really wonderful family. And I just thought if you could see them, you could know what joy I come to see you with and how hard it is to be away. By the way, this is... It was, this was a tough thing. I never missed this Sunday in America. This is, a, this is a national holiday in America. My favorite holiday besides Christmas, this is Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> and so for Pastor Lindsay and myself to be here, we, we prayed, we fasted, we thought long and hard. We waited to hear the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord was for us to stay up till 11.30 tonight and watch it on your TV here. So we're going to watch it tonight. Anyway, I just want you to know that's about how high priority you are. Anyway, if my wife asked me to do something on Super Bowl Sunday, I love her very much, but, but I would arrange something else. Anyway, so that's real love, okay? Let's open our Bibles today to the inerrant, the inspired, the infallible Word of the living God that's able to change us. One word, as you heard earlier, one word can change your life. Leaving small. But let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting verse 11 from the message, and then we're going to go to Isaiah 54. 2 Corinthians 6, 11 says this from the message version. Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in or lock you down. The smallness you, f three people got there. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. Amen. Isaiah 54 talks about it this way. 
As Isaiah prophesies in verse 1, Sing, O barren, you have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. In other words, if you've had stuff that you've been believing for and it hasn't happened yet, you're about to surpass the people that got theirs before. Verse 2, enlarge. Everybody say enlarge. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out. Everybody say stretch out. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Say do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Everybody say lengthen. Strengthen. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. This isn't just about buildings. This is about lives. Let's pray one more time. Father God, open the eyes of our heart. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge come and flow through us today and let my message and preaching not be with the enticing words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power. In Jesus' name. Amen. There was a show that used to be on in the States called Smallville. It was about the fictional town in Kansas where Clark Kent crash-landed and became Superman. He grew into Superman from childhood, and so Smallville is kind of the backdrop from that. I live in a mid-sized city in the U.S. I'm near Orlando. I grew up near Orlando, but um, I'm from Ocala, Florida. Most of you never heard of it, but it's, a, it's, it's the thoroughbred horse capital of the world. It is uh, uh, more horse farms there than any other place except for maybe Louisville or Lexington, Kentucky. But there's a whole lot of the triple crown winning horses that have been bred in my city. But it's kind of the best kept secret, you know, nobody knows about it. Now, it's interesting though, when we started our church 32 years ago, we came with a word of our city becoming an international city. And we prophesied and we prayed and we believed and we kept hearing people, oh, yeah, this is one of those small towns. Oh, I, I can't wait to grow up and get out of Ocala. It's, it's just, they call it slow Cala. They call it, they call it, you know, drug. Oh, they fold up the sidewalk to 9 o'clock, and they, and they try to put down my city. And I kept saying to our people, don't let me hear you say that, because this is a city that God has a plan for. Now, I want to tell you something interesting, is, and that is that when Walt Disney took tours of Florida to decide where Disney World was going to be, he almost put it in Ocala. And I'm so thankful he didn't because I left Orlando because, it was, because of the traffic. <laughs> but what it, what it would have been to have our little city, our, you know, our city of 65,000, our county is about 335,000, and it's very spread out. It's one of the biggest counties in Florida. Right in the middle, Florida's shaped like a gun, and we're in the middle of the trigger. And what happens is that lately we had someone come in, this wealthy lady, one of the uh, biggest trucking companies in America, maybe in the world, this lady came in and bought a horse farm and bought hundreds and hundreds of acres and just invested a billion dollars, one billion dollars, <laughs> a billion dollars in creating this world equestrian center. They call it World Equestrian Center. And she bought a hotel, like a Disney-style hotel, like 15 minutes west of our city, out in the middle of nowhere. And now, all of a sudden, this, these things are turning. There's a five-star uh, hotel. Uh, in fact, somebody told me it's six stars. I didn't know there were six. <laughs> There's a restaurant you have to wait a month to get to reservations. I'm taking my wife for our anniversary next month. It's, a, it's, it's unbelievable. And I just remembered those old prayers and prophecies that we used to say starting this little, when we started our little church, you know, we started with 70 people our first Sunday. 70 people, our first meeting. Within a few weeks, I'd preach it all the way up to about 30. It was amazing. <clears throat> and um, today, we're about the same size as your church. We just, uh, I just signed, I've been working for years on a built, new building program, and I just signed the papers last Monday. In fact, our church hasn't heard. 
I just signed the mortgage. I mean, it's, it's set up. Construction goes forth starting the next few weeks. We'll be in by this time next year in a brand new building for children. We didn't build a new auditorium. We're building for the kids, building for the future. Yeah, there's no, that's the best, right? And I think about those days when we were so small and God kept giving us promises. This is going to be an international city. And you wouldn't believe the diversity in our church today and the nations represented. So many, so many places and languages and nations in our church in little Ocala, Florida. The Bible says, speak well of the city where God has brought you. Walk around it. Speak to it and speak well of it. For in its blessing, you will be blessed. Words take time for manifestation. Words take preparation. In fact, in that uh, passage in Isaiah, the Bible talks about, you know, strengthen, lengthen, do these things, enlarge. But that's all the preparation part because you will expand. You're not yet what you're going to be. You're not the finished product. This church isn't finished. This church is just 25 years. Listen, can I tell you, the average church, the average church plant in America lasts between two and five years. If you can last 10 years as a church plant in the U.S., you have a good chance of becoming an established church. 25 years? Oh, please. You've already overcome all the odds. You've already, you've already kicked the devil in the teeth so many times. He's the one that needs dental work. Understand that God wants to do something great, but there's a spiritual battle raging, and that's what I want to talk about for a few moments. You see, we live in a different kind of kingdom, and the kingdoms of this world are not yet the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, but they will be. We live in the kingdom of God. In the middle of a kingdom of darkness, we have a functioning king and a functioning living king and a system that works and, and we know who wins in the spiritual battles that rage. But God's people have to recognize the battle and stand with God and His Word in moments where everything gets fuzzy. Thank you for that overwhelming response. <laughs> and remember as Pastor Jay and I believe and agree. We don't fight for victory. Jesus already won the victory. We fight in faith from the platform of his victory, and we just have to enforce the victory of Calvary through the blood of Jesus. But every, everything you see going on in the world right now is the enemy's attempt, I believe, to restrain, frustrate, block, delay, derail the development of God's kingdom. And the Bible says about God's kingdom that this, this is the truth. God's kingdom is an ever-expanding kingdom. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7 says this, Of the increase of His kingdom and government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over His kingdom. Listen, of the increase, of the increase, not just of His government, but of the increase of His government. So the kingdom is constantly pushing, pushing, pushing forward and pushing outward, breaking boundaries. Everything in this world system is trying to push you down. Growth comes through intentionally going after your design in the kingdom. That your, your latter days are supposed to be better than your former days. That the end is better than the beginning that despise not the day of small beginnings because that's not the end. By the Holy Spirit, your life, your family, your calling, your job, your career, your home, your finances, everything is supposed to be expanding. Now, it doesn't expand at just an upward trajectory. We know that. But let your next low be higher than your last low. Let your next high be higher than your last high. You understand? So it broken line, kind of like a graph, but we're always going up. We're always going through. We're always pressing on. We're always seeing. Why? Because inside of you is the king of the kingdom that never ends and never stops growing and expanding. Here's the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. It's growing. It's pushing on you. 
while everything else in the forces of gravity and nature is pushing you down. What are you going to do in 2022 to grow beyond what you did in 2021? I mean, church attendance is great. Reading devotions is great. But my point is this. What you don't begin to strategize for with intentionality will not happen. Because growth and expansion in this world in which we live doesn't happen by default. It only happens by design. You have to design to yourself to agree with what God is saying, right? God's kingdom is always expanding. Let me read you Isaiah 9, 7 again from the message. It says, His ruling authority will grow, and there will be no limits to the wholeness He brings. The word wholeness there is shalom, peace, prosperity, well-being, contentment, health, and wholeness. His ruling authority will grow, and there will be no limits to the shalom on your life. Isn't that good news for somebody? But here's the deal. The battle we're living in is this battle of expansion versus containment. Expansion or containment. And those choices are right ahead of us right now. Coming out of COVID, I'm telling you, you can see it as clear as the nose on your face right now. COVID has exposed the fatal flaws of humanity and the fatal flaws of human government. I'm not talking about politics. Please don't get understood. Listen, we all have different things on politics. Go for it. Great. In our church too. Just be free. Do what you believe. Go with that. But here's the bottom line is, listen, politics is made up of two ancient words. Poly meaning many and ticks, which means blood-sucking insects. So... So at the end of the day, politics is the, is the fight to get power and to govern, the right to rule. But it's interesting, isn't it? When you see all over the world in different, uh, I mean, third world countries and the biggest countries in the world, your country and my country, that, that, that we see these things released in the bureaucracy of red tape and control that contained us and is willing to contain us into infinity. Part of this was expanded, and, and, and really, I could see this in my... Our missionaries are good friends of ours to Jamaica, and the Jamaican government placed a bunch of rules and regulations on everybody at first, and then by, by, the, by about a few months ago, six months ago, our, our team was home on furlough, and they said, you won't believe what happened. They said, they, they said now they're doing one day a week of nobody leaving their home. Guess which day? Sunday. And the only thing people left their houses for anyway was to go to church. And I said, what about the Christians in government? They said, well, the prime minister is Seventh-day Adventist. He goes to church on Saturday. <laughs> California, laws made. No singing. No singing at church. What? No singing. <laughs> Make a jo- what about make a joyful noise unto the Lord? There, there's, a, there's the law and the higher law. Listen, whatever you want to do is good. I'm good with however you interpret things, but I'm telling you that the Word of God is the highest authority, and, the, and when the world is pressing in to const- constrain and contain you, there are moments where you have to break out on purpose by saying, I have one king and his name is Jesus. I'm not saying don't listen to government. I'm not saying don't listen to government. Don't hear, don't, don't hear this wrong. But we used to have a saying in our church, if you want to test someone's character, give them a little bit of authority. We, we, had, we had one lady that Pastor Lindsay asked to uh, help out and with some of the music things. And before long, we had... Uh, the Gestapo working. We had a head usher one time that was from New York, and uh, within a few months, I noticed 
he was giving special seating arrangements to his friends and using his influence. This was an Italian guy from New York. Do I need to say more? We gave him a little bit of authority, and within a few months, we had the mafia running our ushering. And it would be so funny, except it was real. <laughs> if you want to give, you want to know what's in someone's heart, give them a little bit of power. You're now in charge of this part of the floor. That's what you're in charge of. You may see leadership, you may see Hitler. I don't know. All I'm telling you is it's the wildest thing when you give somebody a little bit of, a little taste. One of the things we need to celebrate in this church is 25 years of freedom. Because you have leaders over here who encourage you, release you to do what you're supposed to do, help you to grow, train you, equip you, encourage you. Help you, I mean, first and foremost, help you come to Jesus and point to him. But they don't box you. And I've noticed I have a lot of friends, pastors, friend, pastor friends from all over the world, and some like to box everybody in. And some like to release their people within parameters and the framework of the vision of the house. We're an expansion versus containment battle. That's where we are. The devil uses the world system to intimidate God's church. Read your Bible and read your church history. The church, the kingdom within us will always be pushing to expand freedom and grow freedom. And that becomes a threat to some. Here's what I believe. This is just a, this is a personal opinion, but here's it. Scared people are easily controlled and manipulated. So if they can keep us scared, and uh, it, you know, my, my, my least favorite phrase during the last two years was uncertain times. If I had a dollar for every time someone said, in these uncertain times, what will we do with this uncertain time? But we have a certain God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was God. Listen, some, here, some of you here, I know realize many of you are younger, way younger than me. But some of us in the room remember something called Y2K. And the earth was going to completely implode because the computer the computer was going to not change to the year 2000 and all of the power grid was going to go computers were going to crash and we were all going to die anybody remember that and before it happened the newspaper came out to interview me the week before and said we want your comment, Pastor, because we, we have another pastor in the area who has advocated he's bought a huge warehouse and has filled it with bottled water and toilet paper. <laughs> and my, they, they asked me for a comment. I said, well, I hope he doesn't get wiped out. <laughs> so, I don't know if I can say that in mixed company, but I just did. But here's what I said. That when the newspaper, what do you say? I said, Jesus is my Lord right now, and Jesus will be Lord on January 1st, 2000. And everything's going to be okay. Remember, Pastor Lindsay? I told the church that week after week. Don't freak out. It's okay. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that God is okay. He's, he, he's not biting his nails because the years, the millennia is changing. He's God, and you're, we're good. But people use that to put fear for a year or two years before, especially it was hysterical fear just before to where the pastor, God help him. I mean, at least for, you know, COVID, he had plenty of toilet paper and bottled water, I guess, still. It's 22 years ago. But understand that in this life, there's always going to be pressure. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, has he? 
but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. The more afraid you are, the more the enemy of your soul can contain you and fence you in. And I'm concerned that we're being conditioned right now toward limitation and limitation of dreaming again. I don't know about you, but the first, the first lockdown, we had, it here, but we had the 15-day lockdown. In 15 days, we're going to crush the curve or whatever it was called. We're going to crush the curve. We're going to stop the, we're going to, 15 days, that's all we need. But then they needed 30 more days. They went into months. We're almost two years. And the kingdom of God is still expanding. It's been the best two years for our church financially. It's been the best two years we've ever had. Makes no sense. Still haven't seen all the numbers of people come back like you have, but I mean, it's coming and it's happening and we're building and we're planning for the future. But you have to push against that thing because fear binds you to the past. And fear constrains you within the limitations of somebody else's definition of you. Think about that. We get our identity through Jesus Christ. We identify, he identified with us, and now we are who we are through him. I know many of you know the, the story I'm going to share, but I, I, I saved it from years ago when I was in the insurance business, before I was in ministry. I, I read this story and I kept it in my notes. It's just for me, just a little thought. At the circus one day, as a man was passing the elephants, he suddenly stopped, confused by the fact that these huge creatures were being held by only a small rope tied to their front leg. No chains, no cages. It was obvious the elephants could at any time break away from their bonds, but for some reason they did not. He saw a trainer nearby and asked the, why these animals just stood there and made no attempt to get away. Well, the trainer said, when they're very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them, and at that age, it's enough to hold them. And as they grow up, they're conditioned to believe they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. The man was amazed. These animals could at any time break free from their bonds, but because they believed they couldn't, they were stuck right where they were. My friends, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you believe that there's something out there to get you, then there's something out there to get you. If you think there's someone out there who loves you, then there's someone out there who loves you. If you think there's someone out there who only loves you but went to a cross for you to give his life for you, to break your life open so you could live a free life in him, then whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And the perfect love of that God casts out fear. We are who we believe we are in him. We're nothing without him, but in him we can do anything. If you think you're bound, you're bound, but if you believe in your heart that you're free, you're free indeed. I'm sensing in my heart in this church a Holy Spirit invasion ahead. I'm sensing maybe even tonight a Holy Spirit supernatural invasion where God is going to come through and open us up again and keep us from these little corners, these little limits, these little lives. Galatians 5, 1 says this way in the message, Christ has set us free to live a free life, so take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. And I submit to you that, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking about a party or political party, anything like that. I'm saying that in general, people that have the power to push the pencil around and tell you what to do, they like that power. And anything we've seen manifest during COVID was not caused by COVID. It was revealed through COVID. The attitudes were hidden in us all along. If someone was looking for an excuse to stay home on Sunday mornings, they got it two years ago. And they can still make it an excuse today. 
but the people who love their God and know their God shall be strong and do great exploits, like Pastor Jay said yesterday. We're supposed to be the achievers. We're supposed to break through. Listen, when you and I are free, it affects everybody at work. When you and I are blessed, it affects everyone around you. When your marriage is good, great, and on fire, it affects everybody in your family. When your life is constrained and contained by depression, anxiety, fear, oh, uncertain times. What shall we ever do with uncertain times? The world has gone nuts. And the only cure is Jesus. And he lives in you and he lives in me. If you've received him as your Lord and Savior, he lives in you and wants to live through you. God is moving. Something's happening. Stand up for your freedom in the spirit realm. This is not about governments. This is about praying and interceding and fighting for your right to expand in everything God has called you to do and to become. God wants you to live that kind of life. The prayer of faith often requires aggression. I grew up in a Presbyterian church. Um, Even when I first got saved, I was still in an evangelical Presbyterian denomination. And I'm not putting down denominations of Presbyterians. I I love them. We called ourselves the frozen chosen. (laughs) When When I was inside, not just now. But when we went to prayer, I used to pray, when I first got saved, I would pray with the older men on Saturday mornings. They said, it's men's prayer. I was 22 when I was really getting on fire for God, 19 when I got saved. 22 when I got on fire for God and in this evangelical church. And I was the youngest guy by far that showed up in these prayer meetings. I said, well, I don't really know how to pray effectively, guys, so show me. So they We chatted for a while and had coffee. That was (laughs) life-changing. And then we'd get on our knees by our chairs. And for some reason, these men like to rub their eyebrows (laughs) and say, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. It's true. I think some of you have been to my old church. And I kept thinking, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit a few years later, I'm thinking like, oh, God. (laughs) What they were looking for was to be able to pray in an unknown way, but they were stuck with, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And it was, there was no life to it. But your Bible and mine says the, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much, one translation says, makes much power available, dynamic in its working. I love that. I think it's the message that says that. Makes much power. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person makes much power available, dynamic in its working. There is a prayer that will get you out of Smallville. There is a prayer that becomes the vehicle to drive out. But it's not little, oh God, prayer. It's sometimes, God, I need you to move in this situation. And your word says. And then when I run out, it's. There becomes a moment where we stand in the spirit and we make our kingdom stand to keep expanding and growing instead of sitting back and shrinking back and sitting there crying in our rooms and wondering what happened. Today's generation is more connected globally than ever and more disconnected socially, personally, face-to-face than ever. And the, the antidote for that is the church. Unless we just all go online. The word church means a gathering together of called out ones to action. A gathering together of called out ones 
and the prefix ek there indicates action. Church is not just a noun, it's a verb. Where are you going today? I'm going to church. Okay, that's a noun. What are you going to do today? I'm going to church. Because it's a gathering together where I sense that I'm called to action. And it empowers me and inspires me and releases me to go be who God has called me to be in this world. This becomes the training point and everything else becomes your mission field. I'm not talking about being rude to people when I talk about aggression either. I'm saying we have to be relentless when it comes to resisting the forces of this present darkness. You don't put on armor to go to the ballet. What I mean by that is I, there was a guy early on in my life when I was in, in a big church in Orlando, big spirit-filled church where I first was in ministry, and this one guy was a, a divisive home group leader, and he kept saying, when Pastor Benny is talking about spiritual warfare, oh, no, no, we, that's, that's the past. We don't do that anymore. No, no, we, we, we don't need the armor of God anymore. We need the negligee of worship. Exactly. And the first time I heard it, it was like, well, that's off. The second time I heard it, it was like, I, I worked for the guy in the insurance business. The second time I, I heard uh, I almost quit. Because Ephesians says, put on the whole armor of God that in the evil day you may be able to withstand. And then tells us what it is. Put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. It's armor, my friends. It's not, we're not, we're not tippy-toeing through the tulips. This, they, they're not, we're not, we're not hippy-dippies from the 60s. They're just peace and love and flowers. <laughs> I don't know what the next 12 months holds, but I know who holds it. And I refuse to allow fear to hold me back, and I pray that you do too. We will not be intimidated. So here's the good news. God's perfect love crushes fear, casts it out. The opening statement for every encounter where God shows up in the Bible is, fear not. I hope you'll fully appreciate the price that's been paid by your pastors and leaders for 25 years. I guarantee you sacrifices have been made that you, don't, that you know nothing of. Serious sacrifices. Tears. Broken hearts when people love God and then fade away. Some of the sacrifices Pastor Julian and Sharon and the team have made only God will know. And this is a mile marker in your history. And I want your pastors to know clearly that despite what, what you feel many times, what you're doing here every day matters. It matters a lot. It's those little days. So keep expanding. Keep pushing. Keep growing. Keep doing what you do, Pastor Julian, and keep kicking down doors before they open. Keep pushing on the things and stop letting anybody intimidate you. I know you don't anyway. <laughs> to keep you from expanding wherever this is supposed to go. Because 25 years, to me, is a foundation. It's a foundation, and when we say your best days are still ahead of you, it's not a cliche. They're ahead of you because this becomes the new platform on which you build up and expand to the left and to the right because God is with you. What you see as limitations today, your heavenly Father sees as stepping stones out of Smallville. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word today. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and move and every and any way you want to. Father God, you're supernatural. You're awesome. And whatever you want to do, 
we say yes. Come, Holy Spirit. Bring salvation to the lost. Bring healing to the infirmed. Bring freedom to those two ladies who have come with pain today. Bring healing in those areas. Lord, there's someone else that's facing surgery, and I don't have a word of knowledge about where, but probably at the hospital. No, that's a joke. Anyway. Right now, if you're facing surgery, the doctor's told you you need a surgery, would stand up on your feet right now. Stand up if that's you. You're told surgery. In the back there right here, doctor told you surgery, gave you bad news. We're going to take it to Dr. Jesus first, right? First. Stretch your hands toward these precious folks. Father, in every area where the enemy has written someone's epitaph or containment, or even a prognosis or diagnosis of surgery needed in their body. We ask you first and foremost, Holy Spirit, that you would come in, Dr. Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. We release your healing into their necks and their backs and their legs and their feet and their hands and their arms and their shoulders, every and any area, the eyes, any area where someone has said surgery today, we put a question mark by that and we put a, we put a, a declaration and, an, and a, a mark that says we believe that by His stripes these are healed by Your power. Lord, let them find their, their next doctor's visit that whatever it was has been fixed. We say surgery, no. Holy Spirit, come and move in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God praise today. Pastor Jay. Thank you so much. Come on, let's give a big God bless you to Dr. Richard. Just so good. So good. So good. So good. Wow, wow, wow. Well, we, as we close today, we are going to go out celebrating because we've got a lot to celebrate. Amen. But, but just before we do, Let's all just stand to our feet in the house. And uh, I, I just want to ask you probably the most important question today. And I know it's already been asked, but do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you received him into your life? You see, it's something, you know, to believe there's a God or to believe there's a higher power or to believe there's something's happening after you die or whatever. But it's a completely different thing to say, Jesus, I give you my life. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and make me a brand new person. The Bible says you must be born again. That's been in the Bible since it was written. It's not just come out in the last 20 years. It's there in John 3, 16. Somebody asked the question, how do I know I'm going to have eternal life? How do I know I'm going to spend eternity with God the Father in heaven? And it was the Lord Jesus himself who said, you must be born again. He said, yep, you're born of your parents, but something needs to happen on the inside of your life. And that is when you give your life to Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one true God who so loved your life that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago. He died on the cross and was raised from the dead in order for you to receive brand new life. See, he paid a price for your life. He paid a price. He didn't just come as a prophet or a teacher. He died for you. He died for me. He paid the price that only his life could pay. And that was the price for the fallen mess that this world became when they turned their back on God. And you may say to me today, Pastor, I've never turned my back on God. I've always believed in God. But I just don't know. It could be this. It could be that. You know what? We're all born into the same situation of needing Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask every eye to be closed in this place and every head bowed. And we do that just out of a sign of honor of people. It's not because all of a sudden this is a special time and we pray with our heads bowed. We normally pray with our eyes open, heads up and shouting. But this is just a very personal moment for God and the Holy Spirit and for you to come into agreement today to settle this once and for all. You see a decision you make right now 
affects your life for eternity. Mine was October the 8th, 1984. I received Jesus Christ as Lord. Sharon was 1973 in her bedroom as a seven-year-old. Well, today's your day. And perhaps you're here today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or perhaps you can say, you know what? Yes, I have received Jesus as Lord, but I really don't live it right now. And I made a decision at Christmas that 2022 is going to be the year I come back. Well, perhaps that's why you're here today. So just with every eye closed and every head bowed, if you want to say, Pastor Jay, can you pray with me? We're not going to embarrass you here today. We're not going to call you out or anything like that. We do that sometimes. But, but today we're just going to ask you to respond. And it's responding to me, yeah, but it's really responding to the love of God. And to say, come on, God, will you do something in me? Will you take this clay and make me into a masterpiece? Will you do something in my life today that will last for eternity? The Bible says you will be born again. His life will come into you and cause you to have a brand new beginning. And if that's you here today, just with every eye closed and every head bowed, why don't you lift your hand in this auditorium right now? God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful. Come on, there's other people here today. You need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. Come on, step out. Perhaps your heart's beating right now. Perhaps you're thinking, oh, I just don't know. Come on, friend, you're not here by accident. Once I've seen your hand, you can put it down. Wonderful. Is there anybody else here today? As I quickly look across the auditorium. Come on, let's all pray this prayer now, especially those who have responded. Let's say, Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me and that you've demonstrated your love. By sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to give me life. Thank you, Jesus. I receive you today as my Lord, my Saviour and my friend. By the help of your grace and your power, I will never be the same again. I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we got something to celebrate, guys. Come on. If you responded to Jesus today, if you feel led in your heart to say yes to Jesus, we want to invite you. We're excited to have you join us, you know, as part of God's family. Um, we know that the invitation is open to all. So why don't we bow our heads and pray? Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us that you call us into relationship with you. We thank you, Lord God, for those who are responding today, that you are with them, that you meet everyone where they are. Whether they've been in a church before, whether it's new, thank you, Lord God, because your arms are always outstretched to receive. Lord God, we thank you for these lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we've prayed, amen. 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 Hey, you know what? If that is you who made a decision for the very first time, we would love to hear from you. We want to celebrate with you. Congratulations. You are now part of God's family. And we just want to connect you. We want to give you something. So why don't you uh, use the link below and uh, drop, us, drop us a message. We want, to, we want to connect with you. And that is the end of the service. We would love to see you again next week in person. We have two services, 9.30 and 11.30. And uh, we hope to see you here. Goodbye. Goodbye.